Nikki and Coco's recent video highlighted the positive effects on streaming services like Spotify for independent artists and they did point out the fact that non-English musicians do reach a wider audience. However, I think we're forgetting something fundamental about music discovery. Hey guys, hope you're well. Today we're going to talk about music discovery. So while streaming services do provide a convenient way to discover music beyond our cultural landscapes, the importance of non-digital methods for finding new music does seem to fade and I think we should bring it back. The video that I mentioned in the intro reminded me of a recent conversation I had with someone and essentially I told the person that I believe that the music scene in Montreal is better than Latin music scene and I want to remind you that this is my opinion and it is okay that if some of you disagree but my argument was that Montreal is a big city, very festival fo focused and especially between the month of May until October there's a festival happening, well no, first of all there's a festival happening every month, at least once a month there's always at least one festival happening in Montreal but when it comes to music between May and October there's at least one festival or what like one big music event happening every week and it took me until I left Montreal to realize how how much I missed the music scene there the thing with Montreal is that you get like every genre happening so we have pop rap R&B electronic jazz neon jazz okay and also the Montreal Jazz Festival is like apparently one of the biggest festivals in the world. Also with Oshaga. Oshaga is like pop, um, there's like francophone music with Les Francofolies or I think now they change it to Franco de Montréal, something like that. There's Latin, Western, rock, even African music. Um, so that all of that happening from May to October every year. When it comes to promotion, there's a bunch of stuff happening. It's not only on social media, so you have on the buses, on the metro stations, you have like in the libraries they have like little posters or big posters so you are not missing out on these events and location wise are really consistent in Montreal so you have Parc Jean Drapeau or Place de Festival in Place des Arts and it makes it easier for you to remember oh like let me check on the Parc Jean Drapeau website to see if there are any things happening or any new events happening this this year or same thing with Place des Arts so you already know which places to go when it comes to finding new events and I don't think that's the same thing here in London now Montreal is very very small compared to London and that's I think that's I'm not saying it's an issue with London but I think because London is so huge you might not necessarily know what's happening on the other side of the city you may you might know what's going on in your neighborhood but you might not necessarily know what's going on happening in other boroughs which can make it a bit more of a if you know you know type of event and I do want to point out the fact that Montreal rarely attracts major tours like even <laughs> that made me laugh even the big Canadian artist Tate McRae is not doing a show in Montreal she's doing all the cities in, in the US but she's not doing she's doing only doing Toronto and Vancouver but so the fact that artists are not are generally skipping Montreal on the tour is likely to contribute to the fact that the city is very thriving in festivals and the th festival scene. Whereas in London, I think because like I said, the city is huge, there are festivals happening, but I don't think it's to that extent like in Montreal. And I do I do want to say that because London is such a big city. Artists have to do a show in London. Well, not only one show, but like multiple shows most of the time. So that's why I think it solidifies London more so as a concert city rather than a festival city. And from what I can, from what I hear people talk about, I think the biggest festivals in the UK are like Glastonbury, Leeds, or in Manchester, or Reading. So it's not necessarily in London that the biggest festival are happening but there are like what's it called wireless is a big festival here um like that's very hip-hop rap i do like i don't know maybe i'm really wrong but from what i can see also the same i don't know much so about glastonbury reading but the festivals that are in london always seem to be the same genres like rap electronic 
maybe like a third it's like a third genre whereas montreal like i said like there's everything like everything is happening at the same time <laughs> so yeah and now when it comes to montreal scene i like like i was saying is like it does offer very much so diversity and it's quite accessible which what i'm trying to say by that is that most events especially any festival happening at place des arts are free and they have some paid options for like private concerts and the festival happening in Parc Jean Trapeau are paid but they're really affordable <laughs> is it really affordable <laughs> in this economy i do think it's like if you're paying for to go to those festivals you're getting your money's worth so for example Oshaga is unique it's like probably three four hundred dollars Canadian which in pounds is let's say 200 pounds for three days that's good money that's really good money um because you're seeing a bunch of artists and possibly discovering new artists so that's great i want to talk more about my personal my personal life i, I want to talk more so my upbringing and how much it has shaped my music taste because i do find myself quite lucky to gr to grow up in such a diverse environment and i it's fascinating to see how behind the U.S. seem when in their approach to discover to music discovery compared to the other influential territories like Canada, Europe. I don't have enough insight for Africa and Asia, so if you're interested, to let me know, please. Um, but growing up in Canada, there is the Maple Radio System, so Maple M A P L M A P L. Yes. <laughs> Can I spell? Yes. Um, like maple leaf, you know, because Canada, it's like the, that, that was like actually like this is genius acronym stuff happening. Hey. So essentially, this maple radio system has four elements that are used to qualify songs as Canadian, like as a Canadian song for radio regulation. So you have M for music, A for artists, P for performance, and L for like. And this maple regulation really does ensure. A diverse range of Canadian music on the radio which really promotes more Canadian artists rather than American mainstream because people do think that American and Canadian songs are similar which is not true and I remember some songs were like blasted on the radio like over and over and over so I thought oh if it's like so popular here in Canada it must be popular in the US no they've never heard the songs huh? so like I do understand that why they wanted to preserve Canadian, like they really want to show Canadian artists and I don't know about this for the US but I do see that Canadian radios also really, really promote um, music from indigenous artists which is very very cool like radio aside my just my overall upbringing in Montreal really did expose me to a rich musical catalog <laughs> uh, so my parents are from Haiti which has brought me West Indian, Latino sounds. And then I went to school in France. Like I went to a French school in Montreal, which is different from a Quebecois school. So I got more, I, I got, um, so being with like French students really did introduce me to like European sound, mainly from French and Belgian artists. And then just living in, Can in Montreal, in Quebec has um, introduced me to like Quebecois artists. So I do feel like I have like a melting pot of, of cultures in my music. And I do want to say that here in London, you can really, really sense this melting pot of cultures, especially there's a thriving Afro-Caribbean community here in London. And that community really does provide a strong appreciation for artists like Stormzy, Skepta, Burna Boy, and then even African talents such as Tyla, Thames, Rema, Arasta. Because they're big artists, for example, in their home country or where there's a strong community elsewhere i do want to say that this recognition is later has really reached the us and i think similar comparison could be like for example the the recent surge of k-pop music in the us but k-pop music has already been a big factor for years in asia and i also want to say like this like late acknowledgement of french speaking artists like Stromae, Angèle, Ayana Kamura, whereas like they've already been really established in France, in Belgium, in Canada, well in like Quebec, I don't know much about the rest of Canada. Guys, please, I know her. Am I busy for, 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 for some of y'all, but Stromae and Angèle are not 
French, okay? They're French speaking, they're francophones, but they're not French. If you're seeing French artists and you say Angèle and Somai in your mouth right after that, you're done. You're done. I'm nice, but some people are not gonna be nice if you hear say, if they hear say, oh yeah, I love Angèle as a French artist. No, they're from Belgium, so that's different. <laughs> that's very different. Um, it's like saying, oh, Canada and US are so similar. No. There, there, there are differences. What I find interesting is that the US is also very diverse. The country really seems to push this strong individualistic approach to music or pretty much anything else really. I do feel like within a friend group, people might have a different, very different music taste in the US, which might explain why during the Grammys, people were very surprised that Victoria Monet won. And some people were saying, I've never heard of her. Like. I've, this is the first time I've seen her face whereas maybe in Canada and Europe and look this is my uh, my observation so if you're if you think that there's something else or if you think that I'm wrong let me know but I feel like in Canada or in Europe there's a, a sense of like shared musical experiences so although within a group people might have different tapes there might be sometimes like common artists or common music genres that will be found within a friend group. If I look at like my parents in Haiti, I feel like they were listening to the same songs from the same artists because like, Haiti is like very, very small. So that's also that. The experiences are very like community based. I wanna say like in Haiti. Now I feel like I'm contradicting myself, but like maybe in Canada it's like, yes, there's that community aspect, but it can still remain sometimes individualistic. But then again, that's probably, it has to do more with social media consumption. That's like very catered to your taste. So, yeah. When it comes to streaming services, I really, like, it cannot be denied that streaming services make international music more accessible. But I do believe the most rewarding music discoveries happen organically outside of the digital world or more so outside of social media. Just imagine yourself, you know, at a restaurant and then just like, a, just a song that you're listening to and you're like, oh wait, that's really good and you're just finding yourself chesaming the song at the restaurant or like just find a new artist at the festival, you know, while you're waiting. Oh, that's a cool thing to uh, to point that out. And also like with Coachella happening this weekend, so that's interesting. Anyways, for Oshaga, I don't remember for Il Sonic, but there are two, what they do is like they have two stages right next to each other, li literally right next to each other. So as one artist is like performing here, they're setting up like the, the, like, the, the stage for the next artist. So for example, and I've done that multiple times. So for example, I was waiting for Charlie XCX on like the left stage. So like they were preparing everything. But you could sleep you could see clearly what was going on with like the Kid Leroy, I think it was, and his performance. So that's how you would like while you're waiting in place for like to be in front of your favorite artist, you could literally see it on the other like right next to you what was happening. And there would be also be big screens. So that's how you would know uh, what was happening and that's how I, I really got to discover new artists going to a restaurant to like listen to music specifically to listen to new music or going to a festival um i mean these experiences are less convenient and less common but they do create like a richer connection to the music and personally being less active on social media I do enjoy those alternative discovery methods. <laughs> like during the holidays, I went back home and we went to this event like at the museum and there was like an artist that was performing jazz, alternative jazz. And it just made me fall in love again with like just like alternative jazz, neon jazz music. And I've managed to find new artists from that performance on Apple Music. And I found myself chazamming songs on TV shows, movies, TV ads, really like anywhere. And one thing I like that I, I can't wait to do this summer is, is that um, sometimes what happens is that you go to a park and then there are people just putting a little speaker for like the friend group. But if you walk by and you overhear the song, it can be like a good um, like social element too if you're not like too introvert. But it's a great conversation starter and great to connect with other people yeah however people who blast the music to the point that you can't even listen to your own music is such a turn off like don't do this i don't know if it's like it's like a flex but i found myself um like putting a little like playlist with my friends at a park and then people have complimented my playlist of the song that i was playing i was like ah! 
thank you <laughs> so you know it's like it's cool really now what does it mean for independent artists obviously social media streaming services have made it easier for independent artists to get their music discovered to a wider audience and although i've said i've personally discovered like really cool indie artists at festivals and i was going to mention luna lee but i think when i discovered her at the festival which was in summer 2022 the label that represent her has been recently bought by one of the big threes so i don't know if that still counts as, as an independent artist but another great independent artist that I've discovered also two summers ago was um, Sampa the Great, who is from Zambia. With that being said, aside, it is it can be really challenging for independent artists to secure a gig, not only at a festival, but like just at a regular concert venue. So I do understand the fact that social media streaming services do help. Like the entry level to promote your music is more accessible. Accessible, sorry. Like if we're looking outside of streaming services, I think a good way for independent artists to promote their music is through film collaborations, I, I would say. I would think like it would be a, like a nice experiment and for any independent artist to get their music out there and so you just like, I don't know, contact other film students who are like making a short film for their school and that could be like a great way to, you know, like you get to create a unique soundtrack for a film. It's a great challenge for you and you never know, it could get picked up by like at a film festival or something like that you never know i think that's that would be a really cool way and the fact that you're doing a film collaboration um i think it adds a certain level of credibility i don't want to say credibility but i don't want to be rude but like it's like it's not like you're making stuff for tiktok like you know to go viral it's like you're taking part you're taking a very serious project and you're making it like a music for that serious project you know what i mean it's not like hey like i'm doing this song for a tiktok dance so it can go viral you know i don't want to be rude sorry or if you're doing a youtube video and then like if you want to add music to your videos there are platforms that do that but i think like if you're i don't know if there's there's like a new like youtuber who wants like a specific sound and you happen to be there i don't know like I, maybe i'm just like reaching like i don't think it's like it has to be like a paid thing Sometimes you just, it's like a creative project that like you can do for free and then that can help you get more eyes on your actual serious new sound that you want to promote and make money of, you know? Other things that I want to like, consider is that when I was saying something about when I was saying about London being a concert city, I have gone to concerts where I haven't known the like entire discography of the artist. Some people they know back to back to back to back to back all the songs of the artist sometimes i'm like i don't know 10 songs i love them all but like if you're if you're putting other songs that i've never heard of great and that's how i've fell in love with the artist even more or i've got to appreciate more of the music for example i went to rosalia and she performed chiri which is from her deluxe the deluxe version of motomami hey I, love that. I put that song on replay and replay and replay and replay after the concert. I love that song. Other example was Ayana Kamura. She performed a song from like her previous, not not Denka, like one of her like one of her early albums. Hot is like a so really good song. But there are two songs by Ayana Kamura that she performed at her concert. And I was like, oh, this song went under the radar when I was listening to it. But now. Now that you're singing, I love it. Not to appreciate a new sound from the artist, or even when there's an opening act, you get to get a new artist. Now, here's the thing with opening acts. Some people don't know how to behave. They're like, I don't care. I don't really care about you. Who was going to see the main act? That is so rude. Like, the opening act is usually an artist that really wants to get their music discovered, has been approved, especially by your main your main act. So get the fuck, like, just, what they like. Open your open your ears. That is what I like to listen to in your ears. Even if it's not my favorite music genre, I'm willing to listen. Some people are too they're too focused on their music genre or their artist and they're not willing to open. And I you're missing out on really great music. One of my new discoveries was Lou and the Yakuza. Si je pouvais, je vivrais loin des méchants et des gens que j'aime. 
Nah, nah, nah. Okay, but that's not a good song. Ah, literally. Uh, anyway, so she's based in she's based in Belgium, but she's from uh, Republic Democratic Congo. I don't know why you say that in English. Uh, Democratic Republic of Congo. That's how you say it. Yes, yeah, Congolese. <laughs> I'll just say that. <laughs> um, yeah. So that's I think like that's one of my biggest like great great music art um discover like artist discoveries and there's a song that i really 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 love that's called everything's beautiful by haida's coyote love that song i want to listen to other uh, all of their songs and because apple music sometimes they slick you like a really good album so the recent album by green day great great Right. And actually, I'm telling you all of this. Like, I'm telling you all the the like artists and yeah, kaka. Ka. Look, my friend sent me the lineup for the jazz festival of Montreal. I'm sorry, I'm missing out on great things this summer. I'm missing out on the best lineup I've ever seen this summer. Let me tell you the big headliners for the jazz festival of Montreal. Andre 3000. <laughs> Levy. Hey, hi, this coyote. I literally. Just... Are you kidding me? Charlotte Day Wilson. <laughs> Ocean Alley. Are you kidding me? And literally two years ago, there was you know the band from Jimmy Fallon. Fuck, I forgot their name. But they were performing for free, for free. And I couldn't go there because my dad was like, oh, actually, we're going to Florida that day. I was so mad. I was really mad. You know, there are big artists that I like, I really want to like go there and explore and discover the music. That was one of those bands. Vraiment? The thing is, I have class. I have school while this is happening because I'm doing a master's. <laughs> I'm actually so sad because I'm talking about Oshaga. Oshaga. The headliners, Noah Khan, Green Day, SZA. I'm missing big this year. What? Where were the Arlen Parks? Oh, that's that's one of the discoveries that I've this year. Great. Arlo Parks. Are you kidding me? Arya Star is coming. Oh, I'm so Denzel Curry. I've seen Dominique Feig. I would like to see him again, but I can't. I've heard of Friday. Who's your is coming? Amza is coming. Labyrinth is. Fuck, Samet. Hey. You know what, Mimi? Bro, I, I just got back from Montreal this at the beginning of the year. Oh my god, my mom is like, I'm like was spending too much money. Might as well just stay in Montreal. Mariah the Scientist is coming. Martin Garrix is coming. What? Melanie Martinez, okay. Michael Brown. I just saw his concert in November. I've heard of Mimi Webb. Ray is coming. Renee Rapp is coming. These are big artists. And they're coming to Montreal. Hey, Skepta is coming. Vraiment? T-Pain? T-Pain! Tyler is coming. Hey, let me see Ilsonic. Tiesto, DJ Snake. <laughs> what? Games. Idris Elba. Wow, Manjo really said you're having FOMO, bitch. Hey! Oh, zero respect. Zero respect. Zero. Z. Oh. Might as well check is a uh, picnic. If I'm coming to Montreal, I have to stay a month because it's happening. Like because the jazz festival is like end June, beginning July, and oh, I guess I don't know why they pushed it out now to August because two years ago it was like literally end of July. Fudge. So you have off picnic. From what I've heard recently is that picnic now has other cities. The biggest art is like mainly the biggest artist. So 31st of May, Marshmallow. Dumdola in June. 
Wow. July, Diplo. Diplo is always here. Diplo is always in my show. All the time. Ajindati is also coming. And last year there was Ketri Mine. Hey! Clearly, Montreal is telling me that I have a relationship. Let's get back to the topic of the videos. Because um, I'm almost done. Um, but yeah, just festivals, great. I prefer festivals. I think I really do prefer festivals over concerts because although you, you're paying like $300, $400, you're getting to see a lot of artists in those three days. Whereas when you're going to a concert, you're expected to know about the artist at some level. Whereas festivals, you, you're just open, you're more open to other stuff. Another thing that I wanted to consider was um, how much we're putting an emphasis of on the USA being the center of the music industry because obviously the most of the headquarters are based in the US but there is that phenomenon that I'm not too fond about regarding non-American artists not being appreciated in their home country and then once they get they gain international success mainly when they gain success in the US people in the home country is like yeah well I know them before I know them better because they're from my home country. I don't know. I don't. I don't really like this. What I do appreciate about the streaming services is that they are making essentially other music capitals. So we're not heavily focusing on the U.S. as a music capital or a music center for the music industry. Yeah, essentially, what I'm trying to say it's not a question of who got to hear the music first. It's more so we're letting go of this emotional element of discovering new songs when was the last time you had a story attached to discovering a new song most of the time people say oh i, got, I heard this song because it was on my new discoveries playlist from apple music or spotify there's not really a oh i was with my friends and this song was really cool and we just bonded over the fact that while this music was playing Something else really funny happened in the friend, friend, in the friend group. You know, those little ele like emotional elements that really connect you to the music. I'm not saying that it doesn't exist when you're listening to a new music discovery playlist. Maybe, I don't know, like you're, you're crying and then um, you're suddenly, I don't know, you went over a breakup and you're like, just like, okay, cool, okay, like Alexa, please recommend me songs from like like sad songs and then they just put a new song and then you're like oh shit this is a really song to cry I don't, I've never experienced this so I'm just rambling but like I think we should like go out more touch some grass and I that also applies to me <laughs> this, like this like community element that we're missing on when you go into a Haitian party music is if it's not the food the music is a big element you're bonding over the music you're people are dancing people are, like that's something you're like I'm missing and then you connect something like a specific song because I know like your grandpa is like doing something weird when the song is playing or like your your cousin are doing some something funny when the music is playing I don't know it's just I want to hold on to that stuff I don't know anyway with that being said I hope you like the video and I'll see you guys next time bye